Hi. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Never used a mic like this before. Um, hey guys, so nice to meet you all. A bit upset that mine's right before the tea break because I think you guys are more excited about the tea break than listening to me. Um, I know you guys are being nice, but anyways, welcome. And today I'm just going to give you a couple of tips on how you can DIY your own basic digital marketing on WordPress. So, just a bit about me, a bit more of the fun side. So, I've been studying and working in marketing for practically 10 years, which is really, really long. Um, I'm not as young as you might think I am. So, uh, but please don't ask for my ID. I left my wallet at home. Um, so, I started Pink Tangent, my own one-woman show, in 2014. And now I'm actually working at Sakura Sky, which is a digital solutions company. And we do bespoke digital stuff for every different client that we have. And I still run Pink Tangent on the side. I love traveling, cooking, dancing. If you have any questions about that, I am happy to explain. I'm a massive backpacker and digital nomad, and I can teach you how to travel for cheap. And of course, I am still a WordPress newbie, so let's all share the love. And um, the stuff I'm going to talk about today, I am not a full expert in it. I'm going to put that disclaimer out there first. I have dabbled in them, and I thought they're really useful, and that's why I want to share with them with you today. So if you also have tips on the stuff that I'm sharing today, please let's um, talk about it later and exchange some love. So if you're just a straight up or maybe a one woman, one man show like myself and you haven't really dabbled in marketing a lot and you don't really know what to do, there are actually some things in WordPress that can help you. Now basics of digital marketing, we always talk about content because Google picks up new content and that's how you get a higher ranking on the search engine itself. Now SEO ties in with your content. SEO, SEM, what's the difference? SEO is organic and SEM is what you pay for. So it's always better, as we all know, to be organic rather than what is paid for because then people know it's an ad and they might be less likely to believe what you say. Whereas if you actually rank organically, people do kind of believe more about what you say because you know it's original content. So sometimes instead of optimization, I call it original because, you know, search engine original, you got to be on top. And of course, you got to tie in with social media. I'm not going to teach you how to manage it today, but I'm going to teach you like how you can tie in your content with that. And of course, call to action. Why? Because you need to generate leads on your website, especially if you want to make money. So main thing about digital marketing especially if you're doing it yourself and if you're not doing any form of paid advertising is content 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 and that has to come from you i'm sure you guys have heard the previous talk about what you can do with some content there's one after the break that will also tell you more about how you can generate content but i'm not here to tell you how to generate it i'm here to tell you what exactly you need with it so of course to start with a blog you need a content strategy you need to plan what you're writing and you also need to schedule what you're writing. You need to decide, what do you want to post? When do you want to post it? Do you want to post it at 12 a.m. Singapore time? Or do you want to post it at 12 a.m. American time? East Coast, West Coast, what do you want to do, right? You've got to look at your audience for that. And of course, which media do you want to use? Are you using pictures? Are you using videos? Are you using presentations you've done online with SlideShare, with Haiku? Are you doing a little ebook? Are you doing a short guide that you've written based on secondary research? Are you doing a podcast? There's so many different types of media that you can choose. And you also want to make sure that you don't combine too many in one because if then, you might actually be sharing too much in one post when you can actually be splitting it up into different ones and capturing different parts of your audience. So, one good thing that I found that can hopefully help everybody is content calendar planning. So there is a um, plugin called Editorial Calendar that's actually really, really cool. So you can see all the different dates up there, what's draft and what's actually scheduled. Now what you can do on the plugin is you can actually drag and drop across the different dates. So you can actually drag, say, from the 16th to the 17th and just drop it just like that without having to go straight into your blog post to change it. Now a calendar like that is really helpful. So I took this off one of the websites. They don't really blog a lot, but I just wanted to show you that this is what it looks like. So you can see they posted on the 2nd and the 4th, and you can actually look at the dates and the months in the plugin itself. So that's really helpful if you don't want to like go into your whole post list because that's really long and really hard for you to see exactly what date which is going out on. So this calendar view just like a Google Calendar is really helpful. So perhaps this is something you might want to think about, especially when you want to share your posts. If you want to share your posts every week, every day, every month. 
another idea for blog content generation that people haven't uh, talked about today, I made sure to check that. There's one called Listly, which is like listicles for your WordPress sites. Everyone knows BuzzFeed, right? And they always do funny things like, I don't know, 10 best things to use when you're going to the shower. And um, so what Listly does is it's actually a site that you can create your own list and even ask your audience to add to the list. So that creates some engagement. So that can actually help with some blogs as well. Um, just to note that if you do want to use this plugin, you have to sign up with the Listly website and get your publisher code from there. And then you put it in and you can actually put it on some of your blog posts and um, have people share, make it more engaging. So this is just a little bit about content strategy that you can actually do yourself and make it easy. Because um, that's what I'm here to tell you about today. Now the next thing after you write all your content, plan your content, schedule your content, you want to make sure that people find you, as we talked about, search engine organic or search engine optimization. Now, sometimes it's already in your code, but for basic people, especially like me, I don't really know how to look at code. So I want to make it really, really easy for myself. And I'm sure quite a number of you might have heard of Yoast. So that's a really, really good plugin. If you don't already know about it, that is something that you really want to try. It makes SEO easy peasy and it saved my life and many, many of my clients' lives because of it. So just a little rundown. This is the dashboard you're looking at. Unfortunately, those are paid courses, so unless you have the money. I did check out the copywriting one. It's 299 US. It's a bit expensive, but the rest of it you can DIY yourself first. So this is how I did mine, and it's basically tips on Iceland. So if anyone's going to Iceland, please um, feel free to come and talk to me. It's a freaking awesome place. And so just the basics of yours and basic of SEO is you really want to look for that one keyword that matters in your blog post. And you want to make sure that you do not repeat those keywords in too many blog posts. So I kind of isolate in like five different blog posts. It's going to start telling me that it's no longer relevant. So that's something you want to note, especially when you're doing your own marketing. Whatever it is, you've got to try and have a unique keyword or a unique phrase to every single piece of content that you're putting out because everyone is different. So you want to make sure that you differentiate yourselves as well. So that's always really cool when you actually put a different focus keyword. And so you can actually have an analysis of like um, whether your blog post is good on SEO or not. And they use the same traffic light system of um, red and I believe an orangey yellow and then a green. And it also shows you how readable your website, I mean, sorry, your blog post is or even your page. You always want to make sure that whatever you're writing it's not overly difficult for the general audience because you, sometimes you do have people who have English as a second or third language who are not able to understand super long words. So the readability test is also really important and that's like another tab that you want to make sure that you check when you're using Yoast as well. And after all of this, you definitely want people to spread the word about your content and get even more people to start sharing and sharing and sharing. So what do you do about it? You want to make sure that social sharing is super easy. I have seen websites whereby like the sharing button is almost non-existent and I'm like, this is awesome and I want to share it with my friends and I want to tell them about it, but I can't find it at all. And some of them actually get hidden behind a little um, symbol. So what you want to make sure, especially when you're writing a lot of content, is that you want to make it so easy for people to be able to share. Because you want to write something really awesome and you want to have people share it straight from your blog. Of course, they can always share it from your social media pages itself, but you, you, know, you also want to bring just random people who are searching on search engines about your blog to get them to share it. So this plugin I found really, really awesome. It makes sharing buttons as easy as can be, as big as the BuzzFeed one that you guys all see. Yeah, I just like to use them as a big example for content because everybody shares them. Their social sharing is really, really easy, and also their content is shareable. And that's the reason why. And of course, um, Jetpack. And no, I didn't write this knowing that Jetpack was a sponsor. I genuinely think that they're actually a really good plugin because they have so many aspects for you to look at. Um, there's the social aspect, they manage your site for you, your traffic. So this is something that you also want to look at to combine all your social together to, to kind of like make it more shareable, more user friendly, and try to get more people on your website. And of course, your content definitely helps, but sometimes you've got to get people to take action because you want to generate some leads. 
Um, generating leads can come in the form of email inquiries, getting people to sign up for your newsletter and linking that over to your newsletter um, websites, depending on whichever one you use. So I have found that this one has worked, tried and proven. Icegram is really cool because it allows you to actually put multiple different um, types of pop-ups together at the same time and stuff that will not annoy your user. You can actually choose options from, say, showing five seconds if the user closes the pop-up and never appears again. So this one's really good because you can get people to subscribe, you can get email opt-ins, you can you know, ask people questions and have them reply, and it's all doable within one plugin, which makes life a lot easier for you. So this is kind of what like Icegram is like. So it's almost pretty much very, very similar to your blog post. And you can actually have different um, pop-ups all running at the same time. And you just want to make sure that you don't run too many at one time, max of two. If you're running any more than two at one time, please don't come near me because I really wouldn't want to talk to you for that because you really start to annoy your user. And I'm sure that all of you have seen websites whereby all the pop-ups keep coming up. You're like, oh my gosh, man, I can't keep calling so many anymore. So two, max, remember that, please. All right, and one last tip that I really want to leave you guys with, please, please, please make contacting you as easy as possible. Some people make it so hard. It's like, I just want to ask you one simple question about your business, about your product, about your brand. Where's your email? Where's your contact form? Where's your social media? I need to be able to find you. If not, how are you going to know that I'm actually interested? So one thing on your website, you, you know, you want to make sure that it, you're easily searchable. If you don't want to put your email address, that's okay. Use a contact form. Make sure that the contact form actually works to your email. Test try it a few times because um, nothing is more important than actually giving your customers somewhere to contact. You don't have to put a phone number, but email, social media, contact form, really, really important things. So that's pretty much the basic tips I have for you today. Feel free to tweet me, Facebook me, Instagram me at Pink Tangent. And you can also email me, Nicole, at pinktangent.com. Very happy to um, answer any of your inquiries. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to take them. Or if you have questions that are, you feel are a bit more private right now, feel free to find me later and we can have a chat more in private if you don't want to share it. And thank you. Anyone with questions for Nicole? No, really? That's so awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I think some uh, some blogs have lots of uh, Sorry. Uh, some blogs has lots of readers, and some blogs like one percent, two percent, nobody even ever reach you. What exactly uh, creates a very popular blog? What mm -hmm. creates a popular blog? Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard people say, okay, you have great content, yeah. great eye-catching title. Okay. But I think some, some, uh, some blog or some YouTube video will just really explore, and some will be just remain forever unknown. Yep. So you want to know exactly how to make that more popular? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, that comes back to a couple of different sections. So as you mentioned, sometimes even if you research and you think it's a great content, you got to do more than that. So you got to be able to share it out on social media. That's for one. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus. if you have a video, YouTube. It's a bit of work, but you can share it all. And then on top of that, you want to make sure that you share it to your friends as well. So it's not just putting it on your Facebook page. What I found personally a lot about the content that I've put out is that on top of sharing it on my page, I share it from my page to my friends. And I have also worked in companies whereby we share it on our main page, all the employees share it out because we think that it's really great content. And we tell people not just like, oh, this is a blog post. If you're sharing it, you want to tell people why you think it's a great blog post. So that's one aspect, social media, you actually want to share it out. And then, you, see, you know, because with a Facebook page today, and this is going down to social media basics, is that um, Facebook always wants you to pay for ads today. So you might have a thousand likes on your Facebook page, but then you realize only 10 people are seeing your post. And that's simply because they want you to pay. And that's like really, really annoying for everybody else. So the, the kind of like back way of, getting of not paying and still getting people to see it is if you share it to your friends itself, and then you'll actually see that it totally explodes from there. So that's what happened for me with, with Facebook. So I shared it out to my friends and suddenly I've had like a 400 
people seeing at least seeing my post itself doesn't mean they've gone to my website but they've seen my post they've seen what I've written so that's actually one way that I've actually done it second way is actually doing the SEO and I've looked at like my Google Analytics and seen people come in for the things that have been searched for so you want to make sure that your title is really good and what people search for as well and that means going into say like the Google AdWords um, search engine to actually look at what people are searching for and coming up according to that, looking at your audience profile and what exactly they're searching for. So sometimes you have to go and look down into all of this analytics and what as well. And then that combine is how I how I got my people to come to the website. And then also if my friends actually thought that it was really good posts, then um, they actually shared it on. So one of the posts I had without me realizing had like seven friends shared it and that just multiplied to like a good 5,000 people just seeing my post and at least bring about 500 minimum back to my website. So that's kind of like how it all went on. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. No problem. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, just on the SEO page, you mentioned something about um, how each of your posts has, has to be um, unique especially in the um, title. Yep. Uh, I don't quite get that because, I mean, of course, it has to be unique, but in terms of the, like, sometimes you explore a bunch of, like, different aspects of a theme or a category. Yep. So, um, does that really hold water? Mm, I found that even though I actually look at the same theme or category, it really, like, makes me search down what exactly it is about the theme or category that um, I am looking for, or rather that I want to be searched for. So f let me try and think of an example for that. Um, say dancing, okay? We've got lots of different styles of dancing, right? But the whole main topic is still dance. So I can't be putting the keyword as dance for each and every single topic because then I'll have like a hundred posts with the same keyword. And then um, let me just go back and show the, um, hang on, yeah. Okay. So you see this, this part where it turns green and orange, especially when you use Yoast? Um, if you've actually used the word dance, if I've used the word dance too many times, what happens is it will actually show up and tell me you've been using this keyword too many times in all your posts. Please consider a new one so that it, um, it can be picked up. So then it actually makes me go back and really search for exactly, okay, is it jazz dancing? Is it tap dancing? Is it ballroom dancing? Is it Latin dancing? Then I go down to exactly what the post is about. And then even though I write the word Latin dance, it actually becomes a whole phrase that's different because of the word Latin in front. So I find that that does hold water. That it actually helps my post to be searched more because I've really gone down to the very essence of what exactly that blog post is about. Because, you know, if I write a general one on dance already, I'm not going to write a second general one on dance because it's pretty much repeating all my points. So a lot of it's actually going down to really finding what exactly about that post is so special, even though it's a general category. And why is it uh, not a good thing to have that repeated in the blog all the time. Like 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 Iceland, like you know, food in Iceland or like places of interest in Iceland. Now you've just named different aspects of it already. Yes. Food in Iceland. Yes. Yeah. So But then on there they will flag it out as negative. They won't flag it out simply because that's a phrase. That's become a phrase now. Food in Iceland, places to stay in Iceland, places to go to in Iceland, cars to rent in Iceland. They've already seen that that is an entirely different kind of word because it's not just Iceland by itself. Yeah, so you can put a phrase as well. The only big thing that I will tip I'll give you in terms of when you're putting a phrase is say for example I put food in Singapore. And in my blog post itself I write Singapore food. And because the words are changed, Yoast itself will not detect that you've mentioned that keyword in your blog post. So if you happen to have a phrase um, in the focus keyword section, make sure that the exact phrase in the exact order is in your blog post so that yours will actually calculate it as number of times your focus keyword up, um, has appeared in the post because that's a very another important aspect that you want to have enough of the focus keyword in your post but not like over spamming it and also not under utilizing it so with, say for example food in Iceland I have to put food in Iceland I can't put Iceland food so in that sense you're really going down and looking at other different aspects rather than just Iceland 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 yeah I hope that helps you yes. No problem. Hello. Hi, uh, <laughs> Lydia. Uh, I'm actually a travel vlogger as well. Have I met you before? Come on. 
Yeah. Not sure. No, I have. <laughs> yeah, uh, just to expand further on her question regarding yep. focus keywords, because um, the thing is, when you do travel, blogging, or anything in, in general, uh, the keyword that you are you are searching for, you are fighting alongside every other uh, global brand which are also buying into these keywords. Yep. So people are paying huge amount of money for ad, ad, uh, AdSense and all that. So sh instead, should we still use a very general focus keyword or it should be very niche in terms of uh, specifically something that you are you represent? So does it even matter if, if um, Yoast penalizes you here when actually Google doesn't penalize you? To be very honest, I haven't gone down to that level of search. <laughs> like, seriously. Um, usually for me, I actually don't entirely search myself in terms of my posts a lot. I, I actually rely a lot on social media and um, having my friends really like read it up and people on social media actually find me as well. So in that sense, it is, I'm not entirely sure how to answer your question. I will have a bit more search because that is something that I want to look into as well. Um, what's that? Yeah, I mean you are fighting with everyone in terms of your keywords and that's why you should be specific as best as you can and um, going back to AdWords like the AdWords generator if you get into it totally free to use and that's when you see like what kind of a search volume are people searching for and that's the kind of words that you want to use to actually see yeah I will search more and let's have a chat later uh, is there any more questions? No? Okay, if not, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.